Hello and welcome everyone to our latest general presentation on endotracheal tube and stellate versus endotracheal tube alone on first attempt intubation success. The stellato trial published in ICM recently. Now intubation is very common in ICUs. Complications related to tracheal intubation is higher in ICUs than in operative rooms. This is mainly because of the anatomical difficulty and mostly because of the physiological difficulty because of pre-existing hypoxia, hemodynamic instability or logistical difficulties. Now, previous literature has shown us that we get a first attempt success of around 60 to 85 percent while we get a complication rates of around 30 to 60 percent while intubating. So there is a lot of room for improving the safety and efficiency of tracheal intubation in critically ill patients. So the objective of the study was to determine the effect of using intubating stillet on first attempt intubation success during tracheal intubation in critically ill patients. And the comparison was with tube, tracheal tube alone and they thought that the use of stillet would definitely increase the first attempt success rate. The material methods the study was a multicentric parallel group unblinded pragmatic randomized trial it was conducted in 30 icus university icus in france and two non-university icus it was a centralized randomization with one is to one allocation in the two groups the inclusion criteria was age more than 18 years with Patients who are covered by the public health insurance of France and who could give consent. The exclusion criteria was age less than 18 years, patient who had a cardiopulmonary arrest, patient who had a previous intubation in the study and patients who are pregnant, protected patients, refusal to take part in the study not being covered by the French insurance was a exclusion. Now, there was no fixed protocol of how to intubate, what should be the position, what tube is to be used, what laryngoscope is to be used. Uh, because it was a multicentric trial, individual centered had their own preferences. But this was the protocol which was sent to them, which could should be tried to be maintained during the intubation procedure. Now, coming to the results, total 7,084 patients were screened, out of which 1626 met the inclusion criteria. After excluding the patients, 1040 were randomized into the two groups of stillet and non stillet. Out of this, around 500 were analyzed for the intention to treat analysis. So, briefly summarizing, the two groups were the one which used the stillet and one without the stillet, and the patients were around 520 in both the groups. If we look in terms of the demographic profile, the age was around 60 years, predominantly male with a BMI of around 26. So far was around 6 and 20% of the patients were on vasopressors. The reason of ICU admission, the most common was acute respiratory failure followed by septic shock. Apart from that, the reason to intubate the most common reason was acute respiratory failure followed by coma. Now, in terms of the difficulty of intubation, the groups were comparable. Most of the patients were in the low risk of difficult intubation. Only 5% of the patients were in high risk of intubation group. Now, regarding pre-oxygenation, it was predominantly done with bag mask followed by bi-level positive airway pressure. 15% of the patients were pre-oxygenated with HFNO. Now, if we look in terms of the outcome, still at group had a significantly better first pass success compared to the non stillet group. Now, if you look at the complication, the non stillet group had a higher risk of complication. Though the first attempt success was statistically significant, the complication rates were not statistically significant. Now, if you look individually, here we can see the primary outcome is statistically significant, 78% versus 71.5%. Now, complications 40.2% versus 38%. Now, if we look individually in terms of the complications, severe complications were more or less similar, while moderate complications were slightly higher in the uh, only tracheal tube, that is the 
traumatic injuries were almost again similar in both the groups exploratory safety outcomes in terms of the lowest uh, oxygen saturation highest fio2 was also roughly similar in both the groups now number of intubation attempts again as we already know it's a significant thing and it was better with stillet group regarding clinical outcomes there was not much difference it is unlikely that just the intubation is going to affect these outcomes so they were as expected similar now if you look in terms of subgroup most of the groups are showing a significant improvement with stillet but uh, the most important group that we are looking for was the difficult airway group in which we did not find much difference and also the obesity group where we do not find a statistically significant improvement with the use of stilettes and the study has certain limitations the first one being that it was a non blinded study obviously because the thing is like that it is quite visible if you are using a stilette so it was not possible to blind and it will definitely have some impact on the recording of the results the use of macintosh laryngoscope again something uh, which was may not be something which is used in all the icus some icus may be using the video laryngoscope so this study may not be applicable to them but overall we know that the video laryngoscope has not been very efficient in terms of uh being better in compared to macintosh laryngoscope regarding difference between the difficult airway group and the obesity group there was no significant difference which could be because of the less sample size now patient position was not assessed and uh, this could have had a impact because of the individual practices could have affected the first pass success rate because it was not protocolized and it was based on the individual practice of the individual centers finally the time was same between the two groups so the time to intubation was not significantly different but overall the conclusion remains that in critically ill patients undergoing tracheal intubation a stillet improves the first attempt success rate and if your take home message would be that we should use stillet as a method to intubate in all patients and we should not wait and use it in our second attempt so thank you for your patience and check our website for further information